searching for you Are you lost in the woods again? Summertime keeps biting the dust Are we out to cold games again? Hello, everybody. Welcome to our uh, new series or semi-new series of Archives Live. Apologies for the late start. We had some technical difficulties, but that is the nature of live streaming and the difference between a live and a recorded performance. So welcome back, everyone, and I hope everyone is healthy and safe. Um, we have uh, a wonderful couple, Barb and John Ray, with us. And uh, let's see if I can get us both on screen. Here we go. I think I got us both. There we go. Um, uh, hailing from Austin, Texas. And I'm going to let them tell you a little bit about them. But um, I just want to say this has been a, a long anticipated uh, pleasure. I'm really. Uh, glad to see them. They waited for me. It's been, a, we had scheduled, I think it was back in uh, July, and um, and life happened. So we are now uh, getting together again, finally. And there's been some wonderful changes in their lives as well. And they'll tell you all about that. Um, so this is Barb and John Ray. And uh, uh, before we uh, get into some of the um, technical stuff, I really wanted to get into some of the basic information that I start these series with. Uh, uh, but in this case, since you're a couple, I wanted to ask um, how a musical couple like you met and got together. What came first, Moon Ray or uh, your, uh, your meeting? So tell us a little bit about you. All right. Thank you, thank you Dina, Dina, for having us on. We love art and we love archives. We love what y'all are doing. Uh, Barbara and I met at Baker Street here in Austin. South Lamar. South Lamar. And uh, we actually have a song about it. It's called Heartbreak of the Tell. But um, it, when I, I was, first, go ahead. I was going to say, I was getting cheesecake to go. Yeah. So I, I used to order cheesecake to go. I was filling up at the bar and I came up to the bar to get my cheesecake and Johnny came up to me. Yep, it was about a month after I moved to Austin and I was watching a, a buddy's band play and uh, saw her and I just had to take a chance and go ask her out and she played really hard to get 
for about three weeks. We have another song about that. It's called Cotton Candy Disco Pie, the lyric video that just played. But uh, she played hard to get, but it was fun, the chase and everything. And uh, she finally gave Three in. weeks. He kept texting. <laughs> so he asked me out on live music, like a show at night. And then he asked me to go to a bar at night. Then he asked me to come over to his place and watch a movie with his sister, which I thought was kind of odd because I had just met him. I wasn't going to make a move on her in front of my sister. I mean. There you go. You had a chaperone. That's nice. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then he asked me for lunch. So the lunch was the one that did it. And it was at a vegetarian restaurant. Golden which, Creek in yeah. Austin. It's great. If you ever uh, there, it's a good place to check. Yeah. At the time, I was vegetarian. And yeah. he, that that was very, that was that was the first date. Since yeah. then, though, we were inseparable. It was pretty strange. Here we are almost seven years later, six and a half, I guess. Yeah. And uh, married and. Uh, we we do have some pretty exciting news. We're also expecting a, a little little uh, musician, little art synthesis inside <laughs> there, uh, and cooking in the oven. Yes. Uh, his name's going to be Rogelio, and uh, Rogelio Ray. Yeah, we're Rogelio Ray, and very excited about so that. So I guess. I oh, mean, congratulations! Uh, That's so great. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So us meeting came first, and then Moon Ray was created. A year, a year and a half later, we didn't even play music. The whole time. I mean, she definitely loved music and was taking drum lessons when I first met her and could play acoustic guitar a little bit, but it was kind of more of just like a entertainment hobby thing. And she started helping me with my branding. I was doing like a psychedelic folk uh, singer songwriter solo project. And she dove in with her awesome business skills and kind of helped rebrand it all. And then we, she got me really into listening to 80 synthesis. Synthesi uh, synthesizer music, you know, Depeche Mode and stuff, which I liked them before, but I never really dove in too much. And, yeah. Um, and then Moonray was born from a camping trip yeah. that we went to. It just clicked. And we're like, why are we not playing music together? Like, we can do this. And so I just kind of scrapped all the old material and we just went in a completely different direction inspired by synths. <laughs> That's how oh. Let's go ahead and listen to some uh, stuff right away from your studio. We saw some, uh, um, I love your video stuff, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but I want to give everyone an uh, opportunity to um, see you both uh, um, doing your thing. Okay, cool. Okay, Bye. thanks. <laughs> Okay, we're back. 
We're back. So tell us a little, a little bit about this piece, because most of the stuff that I've heard from you is very um, lyric driven, and this is a little bit different. It uh, has sort of a, I almost want to say synth surf feel to it. Cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we were just, um, we just, we wanted to create an improv piece that's um, special for this live stream using the ARP synthesizers. We designed some patches. We used the <clears throat> 1979 ARP MK3, the orange model. It's one of the last models that ARP made for the 2600 as a base. And then the, we used a 72 Tonus for a trumpet sound. And we kind of were going for a surf vibe. We just were thinking, you know, if we're sitting watching a stream, what kind of music would may make us bop a little bit? So we started, we dance and then come up with a little beat and then just kind of put the little parts together. But um, we, we, we love making all types of music. The concept album that we, that's our debut material, Honeymoon, was um, definitely aim to make more vocal driven stuff but very filled with synthesizers and everything and we love the tropical vibes we, so we do we kind of add either surfing or a little bit of tropic tropical feel to we love the beach so we're always <laughs> trying to like That's, add a little bit of something or like even conga sound palm trees and pineapples i mean uh i i, I was going to bring a pineapple in here but it actually went bad oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time we'll have to have it at the happy hour with the little uh, umbrellas and uh, uh, yes. stuff like that That's stuff. We do have orange juice. <laughs> there <you go>. Cheers. <laughs> I got my cheers. cheers. <laughs> mm. So let's take a look at your studio now. I know we were having some technical difficulties before everyone, so I uh, I could try to attempt again to call you call you in, um, unless you think you can uh, show us now. What do you think? Are you able to? Uh... Yeah. If you want to call us in, yes. Okay, let's see what I can do here. Every uh, this is a never before tried in my realm, everyone. So let's see if we can actually add the second. Uh, so hold on a second. No, not happening. Okay, I don't think we're going to get it, guys. Sorry. Yeah, we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah, we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. So, yeah, you're well, going to have to. All right, so tell us a little bit about your gear. Sure. So Barbara and I really got into the vintage synthesizers about three and a half years ago. Started with um, buying a reissue Oberheim OB6. It was um, instantly accessible to kind of get some of those sounds. And after we dove in and started YouTubing, man, it just is like going down a rabbit hole of exploring sounds, comparing videos, looking at the OB8, the OBXA, yeah. ARP synthesizers. And we uh, we went to Switched On here in Austin, and they had an OBXA. And we just, we played it and we we're like, oh my God, we just like have to have this sound. So we went back and we sold a bunch of stuff. We sold two four wheelers and a jet ski and a bunch of other stuff. And we bought that synthesizer and a Moog D and then the ARP MK3. Um, and it really just, it's been a rabbit hole. We've put so everything into trying to acquire more units. We've driven to Wisconsin to pick up Profit 10 and we have, um, so we started a collection of synthesizers because we we listened to a lot of 80s music and we were trying to figure out like what are the sounds that we love about like and we started to find out and learn more about them we did a lot of research and it was a lot of go diving into the history of them and who has used them and you know what tones you can get out of them and how to create a specific tone for a specific song and things like that and so far we i think for the past four years we've collected and i mean there's been some that were not they had to be a little refurbished mm -hmm. um found great on. deals and then had our buddies that switched on and um austin synth lab they did some of the repair work and restoration and we we, we already had a recording studio we've uh owned and operated a live sound company here in austin for about five and a half years and i've been recording for 12 years now more folk and indie rock 
psychedelic rock stuff with a little synthesizer. I had a little micro chord, but nothing too crazy. But once we dove into the magic of vintage and analog, just all kinds of synthesis, we wanted to create a space for people to come and get to play a Yamaha CS80 or a, a fully calibrated new bushing Prophet 10 with MIDI. Or Jupiter and 8. Get, you know, mm -hmm. our tonus and be able to hear and experience the legacy of these instruments. And so we, we really, we're, it's an ever growing journey to create a synth oasis recording studio environment for you to come in and create awesome music. It doesn't have to be synth based music, but you'd be surprised how just about every genre of music you can sneak a synth in it. Oh yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, the whole COVID Thing happening it's kind of dampened uh, for a lot of our clients coming to get to experience it but we've really grown and found a connection with people and you know we're still able to do a lot of cool stuff like they sit can send us MIDI data from their VSTs and we can run them through the ARP or the Moog or in, any of these and then send them back high resolution WAV files that are you know, so do you want to go through the list of which ones we have on this side? Yeah, so we can go, we can kind of give a list of our synthesizers. Uh, I could I could run around and do a, a little fi a video clip too and then send it to you. I don't know if you'd like to try that, but um, just the, off the list, I'm sure people watching are familiar with synthesizers. And oh, I think we got a, a, just a couple of synthesizer enthusiasts <laughs> in the audience, yeah? Just a couple, right? <laughs> like after, after the stream, you can go visit us at Moon Lab Studios, Austin, on our Instagram page to see pictures and stuff, but I put some we have at the end, so she, they should they'll be able to oh, find cool. you. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Right on. You want to start here, Johnner? Yeah, we'll start with our first ARP. We had the MK3. Uh, we have the ARP Tonus, and um, we actually bought the Tonus later, thinking we're gonna choose between one and have to sell the other. And we could not give it up. We just could not give it up. I mean, literally, we had to pull a lot of strings to try to keep it, but it ended up it's still here and. We're very happy about it. They so, both have the matching keyboards and stuff, and um, it's a. It, they're both very like unique, different like sounding. You just they you can't. Yeah, the yeah. tonus is like it's got this beautiful woody, natural, creamy beefiness to it, and the Art MK3 is just a little more brutal, edgy. Uh, they're both awesome. I can't get, ever get rid of them. Our our kid will inherit them for sure. <laughs> We, and for, as far as Oberheim's, we have the Matrix 12, a four voice, an OBX, the OB8, and an OBXA. And um, they all have MIDI except for the uh, four voice. And for the Jupiter, or the Roland series, we have a vocoder VP330. My favorite. I <laughs> love the VP330. It's amazing. It's a really cool vocoder. We have the Jupiter 8, uh, Jupiter 6. Jupiter 4, a Juno 106, and the, the new Jupiter X, which is pretty impressive for a digital synth no, we for live. Moog. And uh, for Moog, we have a Lamb memory Moog that somebody traded us for um, a second Jupiter 8 unit that we bought to um, kind of do the same thing, compare 12-bit to 14-bit. Didn't find much difference there, so we but we uh, the, uh, a deal came up for someone that wanted to trade us the Lamb memory Moog for it, so we we jumped on that. We have the Moog One in our practice room. Um, for Schmidt, Moog Voyager and the Moog Model D, the modern Sch Schmidt synthesizer, which is one of our favorite. Actually, it is our favorite modern synthesizer that's out, and uh, those guys are awesome. And um, there's some other various smaller ones and things. And drum machines, we have like the 808. Uh, drum tracks, DX Stretch, DMX, uh, Lindrum. Uh, Bruce Forat is modding our Lindrum LM1 right now, oh, okay. which we have yet to get it in our hands. We're very excited. He's putting new sliders he and uh, stable tuning. He's such a cool guy. Is that, the, no, is, so, that, yeah, is, is that from the Austin store that you were talking about? The, uh... Uh, no, this is Bruce Forat. So he worked with uh, Lindrum and he oh, created okay. the, the okay, Lin yeah. 9000. Yeah, no, no. He's a really yeah. awesome guy. I find myself talking to him for like an hour every time I call him. <laughs> he's really, uh, he loves to talk about synths all day long. And he's a huge fan of ARP. He actually has like eight units of 2600s. He's got so many of them. And he's got a Quadra and a Chroma. What we want. He's got multiple Odysseys. Yeah, he's got so many synthesizers. It's uh, one day. <laughs> Can't have too many. Well, <laughs> <laughs> nope. 
It's a, it's a good thing that you both are so enthusiastic. That's all I can say. <laughs> we, we do yeah. Like <laughs> I was telling John, I was like, you know, should we take a trip? I was like, well, we, uh, I was like, we can't get the synthesizers up. Like we, we've thought about like, maybe we need to like sell one of them. And I'm like, we just can't. Like they're, they're part of like the family now. They're just, they're, you know, it's they hard are. to let them go. We can't let them go. We just want to keep collecting and growing and eventually. We're have, excited like, for the, the public to be able to come in and bring their love in here too. We we miss having we do warm bodies in here. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. Uh, the the foundation is working on starting to create a collection of uh, ARP ARP synthesizers as well. And uh, we have a studio that we're working with in Boston, and you know we're just sort of slowly amassing the instruments we want, but uh, without people using them, it's 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 a very different you know thing to have um so uh i just want to go back on something that i found really interesting you said that in um in your production that you're actually working remotely with some people they bring you tracks and then uh tell us a little bit about that process i think a lot of people in the audience would be interested to know how you're doing this and and what the possibilities are the possibilities are pretty endless actually it's um we c you can pretty much take an idea if you just know how to strum an acoustic guitar and have a song and a chord we can Skype like we're doing here. And um, I have only really found it to work well in Zoom to be able to share my Pro Tools interface with the, the person that we're working with. And they can just show me the chords and I'll play their drum machine of choice, whether it's a acoustic, acoustic drum plug-in sound or a vintage drum machine or whatever they want and kind of just start building their song for them and then at the end, I send them isolated stems and MIDI data, and it's all interchangeable. I like to send the sections. So you can either, it's like if you're familiar with Ableton or any kind of mm -hmm. grid-based mm -hmm. sample launching DAW system, you can kind of create an intro, four bar, verse, eight bar, pre-chorus, et cetera. And so you can actually, we actually send the WAV files in separate organized folders of each section, so that allows them to import it into their DAW and loop, cut, add, however they want, if they want us to even modify the MIDI and send it back. Yeah, I was gonna say, they can also send us a MIDI. They can, so if a, if a musician or an artist has MIDI data they've created in their DAW, they can send each of the parts to us, and say if it's base MIDI data, I can run it through a CV to MIDI converter and send it through like one of the ARP 2600s and send them back the isolated samples of their choosing. You can do like 96K, 24, or whatever. And um, drums, we can all do separate stems, kick, snare, etc. There's really endless possibilities. It's great. Um, I really love working with MIDI data. Even if it's not, a lot of people have the misconception that MIDI data is super quantized and robotic sounding, but you can leave the quantized feature off if that's not what you're going for and that's send us that. We can even run it like a real base through an algorithm and uh, extract MIDI data with piano, drums, lots of things. Yeah. And it's pretty cool. Wow. Technology. How did you learn about technology? Do you, um, is any, are you self-taught? Have you, uh, any degrees? What, tell us a little bit about uh, some more of your experience. So I've been a very passionate musician since very early age, and I just had a very strong desire to be able to capture my own ideas and stuff. And um, I did an internship learning music and basic one-on-one -on -one recording. But after that, it was really just, oh, I need to figure out how to get my keyboard into here and I want like the delays to be synced with my click track. Okay, Google that real quick. So it's like one step at a time. And really for the first eight years of my recording, I beat my head against the wall. I was very stubborn. And I had friends that would help me and show me techniques. But uh, after I kind of cleaned up my health and took creating music a lot more seriously and passionate, I acquired, required books, Bobby Osinski and uh, Mixer Man who's actually the guy that uh, mixes, mixed our last mm -hmm. EP, Honeymoon. He writes awesome audiobooks. Zen and the Art of Mixing. Mentors. Zen, Zen and the Art of 
production. Mm -hmm. And um, that and a lot of just hands-on experience working with bands and recording. Running Life Sound. Running the Life Sound company and knowing how to, well, having to switch over bands and their complete sound really fast over and over again for festivals during South by Turn and Burn. It really kind of helps you get an idea of what can be done or possible ideas to do. And um, listening to music. Listening to music a lot. Yeah. Analyzing it. Yes. Instruction manuals <laughs> to yes. the synthesizers really help. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that as we get older, I think we we read more instruction manuals now. We're pretty new because to synthesis in the scheme of there. things. I mean, I've really only been diving into subtractive synth editing for the past like four years. Four and a half. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's been an awesome learning curve, but man, it, uh, don't be intimidated by it. If you are, jump in and start moving knobs. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a uh, learn by doing. I find you know you can you can learn theory only so much, but uh, but the re you know the response, the feedback of getting pun intended, I guess <laughs> of hearing of hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just love hearing. You know, uh, you know, I could just I, you're a new uh, a newer generation. You were probably not born when ARP had already, uh, you know. Um, stop being um, a business in its first incarnation. So uh, it, it really thrills me to see you all doing different stuff. And, and uh, the fact that you're doing lyric driven music, which is a, very, a much more similar to a lot of the um, more well-known songs from uh, like, like your Depeche Mode and um, uh, the other, you know, Duran Duran, the bands that you're mentioning. Um, right. is really is really is really cool and very different. It's very refreshing to hear. Um, you also, as well as doing studio production, is it uh, your production that goes into the video? Um, I'm going to show everybody in a few minutes, by the way, uh, a little trailer from your video, which is uh, really really cool. By the way, it reminds me of the of the glory days of MTV. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I was brought up, you know, this is what I grew up with, you know, MT and I, you know, I haven't, I haven't, you know, this sort of lush and lavish production. I mean, it looks very complicated. Should, should I show it first and then we'll talk about it or? Yeah, let me do that. Sure, sure. All right. Yeah. All right. Hold on. All right. So this is so much fun. Oh, my goodness. We don't have much time. If we want to beat darkness, we have to reach him before he destroys everything. In a world ruled by darkness, <laughs> Moonray will risk it all to find the light. Join them on their epic quest through time as they save their world from an eternity of darkness. <laughs> you have issues. Coming soon to a phone screen near you. Oh my goodness, that's so much fun. I'm like, um, it, it's just really, really great. <laughs> Rocky Horror, Michael Jackson, all these things are coming into my head. Um, so I want to know more. I want to know about this. Uh, this is a trailer for a longer video. So yes, this is a trailer for, um, we initially, we're gonna, I mean, we were, initially the idea was a music video, but then we, we talked to the director. Um, his name is Diego Lozano. And we decided to make a short film music video, kind of like, you know, Thriller and Michael Jackson. So it, that was kind of like the kind of the idea and a lot of vintage, you know, sci-fi films. Um, so that was a lot of what was behind it. And we're very excited for it. And it also yeah. kind of embraces a little bit about what we're about and something that we care about. We also like a lot of sci-fi. We love, um, we love sci-fi. Time traveling, back to the future, dinosaurs. Oh yes. You know, going, being... going into space. Um, we really loved, we told the director the concept we wanted for our brand. It's kind of like our hello to the world as um, Moon Ray, which is meant to be a light in the darkness. Um, uh, and the video goes in where we're battling darkness and it's everyone has a darkness to fight and it ends up being um, 
really well portrayed. I think the way they, they put it together, we really have to give our tip our hats to them. Diego Lozano and the Bring Light and Sound team. They were amazing. Crew. It was a three day shoot and um, we did. I think it started at like nine in the morning. Oh, we it was like, a lot of work. And part of it was really hot. We we did we shot one of the scenes in the green belt, and it's really funny. Um, <laughs> I, I was dressed in a very skin tight silver leotard, and I look really cool with the with the armor and stuff. But uh, we're there all day long, so you know I have to slip all out to try to use the restroom real quick. So, and uh, I, here I am with all with only the leotard and silver makeup on my face, and like pink sparkles. And it happens to be like the busiest day at the green belt and everyone, I'm trying to like go off by myself and people are following me. Like who is this weird guy out here in the woods? And I was away from the whole film crew. So it's like, I really looked like a weirdo. You but. gotta imagine though, he was wearing a, it's a full body leotard that's like spanding <laughs> on your body, silver with face, silver face. And it was hot. It was like, it was gel- hot. No, it was so- September. September. It was September. It was still hot. It was still hot. But it's in the middle of the Greenbow where everybody goes and, you know, spends time on the little lake area and they're going <laughs> swimming and there's a lot of tourists that come by. And, you know, Austin is keep Austin weird. So. I, I was a, yeah, I was a good mascot for the day. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was, it was great. It was awesome. We had never experienced such a professional experience, experience with working with the team. Definitely could not have pulled that off by herself. The makeup, hair, they all, there was two ladies that were there, Bree and Katie. They're here in Austin. They do they costume, did design. costume design. They made, they were so creative. I mean, they made armor out of CDs and analog tape. Oh, that's and really neat. We have a cool battle scene with zombies at the end where uh, Mo. Uh, switched on let us borrow a Mo guitar and I had my guitar with lights and there's like lasers shooting out of it melting zombies at the end and it's it's, it's cool we're excited yeah. the song is <laughs> when you're around it's it's already out on Spotify you can listen to it but it's, um, it's, and, then, and we also got to do the what was it the background sounds the yes we did the scoring for the music video too which is a lot of fun it was our first time doing a score to video something we really want to get into more I think scoring is a really interesting place to go, and uh, you know, there's there's so many things that I can think about with with uh, this video. The first of all, the science fiction aspect, of course, and uh, uh, ARP itself has has a history with science fiction, as you probably know, um, with uh, Close Encounters and Star Wars. Um, yeah. My dad was actually really into science fiction. He took me oh, to really? see, he took me to see Two Thousand and One: A Space Odyssey when it first came out. I think I've said this before. That's definitely telling you how old I am. Um, it all, uh, but we uh, at one point uh, we started to write a science fiction novel together, and then he actually started writing a science fiction novel on his own. Someday I will get that out of the archives. Um, oh but my God. science fiction was big in our big in our family. I was I was raised on it, if you could say, uh, you know, and with my dad, and then I would uh, love to see that turned uh, into a film. Yes. You look really at the art panel design and layout and you know it's yeah. the team was definitely into science fiction. I mean, it's just like straight out of a moon station. Yeah. Uh, science experiment. Yeah, with the console right yeah. in front. If we're flying and hey, it does take you back in time. It does. It does. My dad worked, um, he did some work for NASA before he got into uh, synthesizers. Wow. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And Logan's Run, David Barron, thank you so much. It's true. Logan's Run has the ARP 2500. And if you go to our um, our YouTube page, we have a lot uh, we have a lot of uh, interesting videos and things like that to talk about that. Um, well, this is great. Um, so I'm at a point where I'd like to get some questions from the audience. And uh, if there's if you all are tongue tied, I can definitely start you off. But uh, so um, if you want to type in a question in the comment area, um, uh, we can answer it. Um, meanwhile, I'll, uh, I'll spur on some discussion from everybody. Um, what instruments would you like to add to your collection? And did you see that collaboration with, um, with Dave Smith and Tom Oberheim? Oh, oh that looks really interesting. The, the Oberheim OB6? Yeah. Yes, we have, we have it here we in the studio. We have an OB6. Uh-oh. It is, it is really cool. It yeah. is. That synth is. I played uh, that for a while. Yep, she played it live for a long time, and we still do. We switch we still them around. Do. It's a great synth. 
Yeah. Um, I do. Like, I, I think the number one synth I'd like to add is an ARP Quadra. I want to get back the ARP Odyssey. Ah, we had we one. Had and we had it. We sold it, and we should never have done that. We sold it because we we're in a crunch. Well, it also went to getting. I think it might have gone to, to the no, Tonus. No, it definitely did. Yeah, it, it went like to the Tonus. We had to. <laughs> Which it was a good deal, but I still figured, I wish we could have figured a way to keep it. It was cool. It had a Phil Caraco patch, bay, yeah. patch point mod on it. it was, so it we want to get that one back. Yeah. Um, also, the Chroma, if I could uh, even be there's... more um, dreaming, I, I'd like to get the enabler and the expander, have the whole... Yeah. The whole kabang. Nice. A Putney would be an amazing one to get, um, or two of those. <laughs> Another four SEM modules for my four voice to make it an eight voice. Wouldn't complain. That wouldn't be done. <laughs> we could go on forever. Yeah, I mean, just... there's so many. Juno 60, Juno 6. Yeah, Juno 6 for sure. Uh, there's a really cool synth called the yeah. Harmonium. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> that would be a pretty cool one to get. It's kind of steampunk looking, but... Um, I think it's like a valve since tube. They use tubes or valves. It's, it's pretty nuts. Um, PPG wave would probably be pretty close after the chroma on the list. So we don't really have um, a, uh, a synth like that wave table. I try to stay off reverb sometimes and I see John Ray on reverb and I'm like, okay. We have a reverb shop. It's called Moon Race Collection on reverb. And we oh. we're always switching stuff around and, and selling things and trading and, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't help to see great deals pop up. <laughs> like, no. So what's right, it what's what it called? <laughs> what's it called? Reverb. That's, it's it's on Reverb. It's called Moon Race Collection. Huh. And I'm not sure how much stuff we have on there right now for sale, but uh, I think we're selling a Oberheim DX stretch with MIDI because we just got the DMX, which I really don't want to sell. And we're we have an SD SV module that's and we make sure to get all of our units fully like refurbished or, or future-proofed before we sell them too. So the SDSV just went up on there. We got to have a rule. Whatever thing we sell, it has to go back into either a synthesizer, into just yes. music here. So one goes right. in, one goes out kind of thing? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So questions from the audience. Any questions from the audience? There's a couple of producers here I see. Should I put you on the spot? Um, <laughs> we have people from Singapore, from uh, Latin America. Let's hey. see. Hey! Yeah. Latin America, woohoo! <laughs> um, all over. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, all right, then I'm just going to have to keep talking. Um, so did the studio result from your need to record your own work, or was it a, always a parallel interest? Did it, what came first, being a musician Defin or producing? Definitely being more, the need to want to record ourselves. Studio time is expensive. We figure if we just, we know we're going to be musicians the rest of our life, we're be better off just start Learning building, our, <laughs> building our own studio. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it definitely is a parallel interest now. We're very passionate about uh, recording other people, all genres of music, podcasts. I mean, we do. If you can put a mic in front of it or make it resonate, we'll do it. We're about it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we are, yeah, uh, I think it's something we're just going to continue to grow. Hopefully, one day it's kind of outside of our house because right now it's 85% the home. Our home is basically 15%. A, no, 85% studio, 15%. Yeah, I mean home. 15% home, 85% studio. It's very, our recording studio is very greedy on our house. Um, <laughs> the traditional living room is like a vocal booth and grand piano. It's more synthesizers. And synthesizers all around. <laughs> Reminds me how I grew up, actually. Yeah, so, but you're about to increase your personnel by one third. So you may want to expand a little bit on that. <laughs> so I'm willing to yes. give up my, my home office. So I have an office that's just, I guess, just for, like, other work that's not music-related, just for, like, the office stuff. So I told John, I was like, you know, I'm okay with giving up my office to make that the kids' room and make sure that we don't take anything from the studio side. <laughs> we have a, a middle room over here that's strictly for podcast production, and we, we can track in there, too, in the band. And there's a full band in here. We um, set it up for that. But we also have a corner we're room. probably going to move a small version of her office into that room as well. So consolidation. Yeah. And you're having a boy. Yes. Yes. A boy. A boy. Rogelio Ray. 
<laughs> yes. So he's he's going to be learning some synthesis at a very young age. Oh yes. Playing with synthesizers for sure. Well, you should have an oscilloscope nearby. Those are always fun. That's how that was my first introduction to synthesis. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, my dad had an oscilloscope in the basement, so I was just really fascinated seeing. We actually need, do need to get one. We of those. do need to. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, all right. So I have one more. Oh, oh, yeah. Ernesto Romeo from Buenos Aires says hello. Hello. <laughs> so um, uh, I'm John uh, Moonray, John Ray, Monterey. I'm seeing a pattern here. Where did the name Moonray come from? I know you said bringing light into darkness, or, um, uh, but uh, is there any parallels here? I know you like to play with language, Barb, and I know you're so, interested. So in I know I love I love languages. Yeah. Um, so Moon Ray came from our camping trip. So we were looking. We were in Chenna Rock. We were in Chenna Rock, which is a very magical place um, in Texas. And it was a blood red moon. It was a blood red moon. And we, we used to go there every weekend or every other weekend just to camp. Um, and we were looking out at the sky and it was oh, pretty late, you know, in those times when we would stay up really, really late. 4 a.m. And we looked at the sky. We noticed how the, the you know, we were trying to get our way back to our our little camping Campsite. area and we noticed how the moon was so bright like it's it's ray was so so bright that it was kind of guiding us guiding us back yeah so and if you've ever been to enchanted rock it's amazing because it's like this huge mountain well it's not really a mountain it's more like a large large hill but it's all granite uh, granite and the moonlight really does reflect really well off of it it's gorgeous but, and then we decided to do moon ray yeah that came from there we also i mean she, I always like to call her my moon, and my second Ray. name is Ray, and my great grandmother was named Marie Two Moons. So the oh. moon has always been a symbol mm -hmm. that I, I've always liked a lot. And I love the moon. I, I actually, I, I have like a company that I need to eventually do something when it's called Luna International. So it's something that it's really, I don't know. I've always had a connection with the moon too. Yeah. In our studios, Moon Lab Studios, and Moon Ray. We're all about the moon, even we though we go to bed earlier these days. We still yeah. <laughs> we just felt like it was it was fitting, especially with Ray and me, Moon, and together. Yeah, beacon of light. Yeah, <laughs> dark. And I see that your cat. You have how many cats? You have two cats. Is that it? We have three. Tres gatos. Tres gatos. This yes. is Miko. He's a farm adopt. We were selling a. He does this really cute thing where he nuzzles your head. Nico. Hey, baby. And he'll just stay there on you. Um, we were selling this piece of this antique video game, and the guy said, you want that cat? He came right, right up to us. And, yeah, we took Mico him home. He just came up to us and they was like, like coming. He lived on a farm with, like, eight German shepherds that were viciously barking every time the cat walked by the fence. So he, he jumped in the van. <laughs> And um, they were nice, though. They they definitely kept them segregated away. So Maxi is our is our first Austin one. Austin Animal Shelter kitty cat. Mm -hmm. And he loves. I mean, at least when we first started playing, we used to have this big orange um, bass amp. So every time we play the synthesizers and the vibration and everything, Maxi would love to lay on top of the amp and just sleep and just cuddle around. Maxi feeling all the vibrations. I was like, I don't know what's what's up with this guy. He like he loves it. He does. They all they all really like music. Mr. Rose not I guess not so fond of it as much. He's kind of our he's an indoor outdoor cat. We uh, picked him up in San Marcos. That he was just kind of an outside cat that was hanging around a property that my uh, my father owns, and he gladly came home with this too. He was really sweet. He kind of looked a little rough, and we. Picked him up and he just kind of melted. And the neighbors had said that we were gonna call the pound on him, so we we just took him into into our house. And uh, he comes inside about three times a day and eats his food and sleeps in the dirty laundry. Oh yes, for about three hours and then he's back out. <laughs> back out at night. All right, so um, we're going to wrap it up shortly. Um, are there anything you'd like to add to tell us about work that's coming up? Um, when is this video going to be coming out? So this video is expected to come out around October of this year. Yes. So it'll be coming out October. Uh, we're still securing the date. 
And we also have um, some songs that are going to be on release that are be- going to be coming out. People can sign up our website mm-hmm. for that. And we're also working on our 2021 EP, which it'll be coming out soon. We've got five songs, four songs. Yep. Yeah. We have five. We have five songs. We're planning on releasing three unreleased songs here in the next month or so. One is available right now for release if you sign up. If you go to our page and sign up for our email, we'll send you a version of that. Okay. And we are also um, really looking forward to the release of our, our music video and working, learning more ARP synthesis during the, our off time. It's been, you know, the, the pandemic is, there's a lot of horrible things about it, but trying to find the silver lining and in the time we have to focus and educate ourselves and learn and readapt, we're finding a lot of people that have been that have been forcefully changed into a new direction. Uh, uh, many of them have actually agreed after the transition being rough, it ended up being a better thing for them. They're, fo- they're following something that they liked more. Taking mm-hmm. it slow. Taking it slow. Mm-hmm. Working on her creating that little yeah, fella. Yeah, March there. 1st. <laughs> But uh, if anybody's out there is interested in learning any more about MIDI data or learning how to use a synthesizer or just any questions, feel free to reach out to us and message us. We're more than happy to help. We love hearing your music. If you want to send us a DM and just send us a link to your music, we'll check it out and give you a follow on Spotify. And we love meeting you. And we love meeting you people, absolutely. And it's such an honor to be here with you, Dina. It's a wonderful honor to have you, too. So um, just a couple of announcements before we end. Um, I do have um, their links are going to be at the end of this video, and which will be permanently available on um, our YouTube channel, and it'll be on this page for the rest of the day for sure. Um, John Ray's wearing uh, one of our new shirts, and um, I'm going to do a little bit of shameless, uh, shameless promotion here. Um, I've just reopened yeah. our our Indiegogo um, campaign. Uh, we're working so- towards a few projects. Uh, one is actually about um, educating uh, using. Uh, we're going to have some uh, video patch books, which are should be. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a new campaign that we're going to be starting in September. So everyone will hear more about that, but we'll have video patch books, which is a, a, a new approach, hasn't been done yet, at least as far as I know, in, in all realm. Um, we also um, are going to be having a symposium on the ARP 2500. Uh, yeah, um, this going to be an online symposium with a round table that's coming at the end of September. Uh, and... Um, and like that. So we're raising a little money to get some of these going. We're working towards a scholarship uh, for Berkeley College of Music. A lot of the colleges have been very hard hit, both by uh, diminished enrollment um, as, you know, uh, as well as uh, you know, people hesitating and deferring education because of the pandemic, um, uh, people, because uh, a lot of people um, are not going to be able to learn the same online as they are in person. So. Uh, we're trying to work in ways that are are aligned with what's happening right now. So those are the directions we're going in. So there's going to be a lot of educational opportunities for everyone on board. And um, I will post that Indiegogo link later today. You can get a t-shirt just like Jean Ray's. So. Um, Anyway, I want to thank you all so much. This has been amazing. Um, I love that video. Please let us all know uh, in uh, with all your great promotion that you do, Barb. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, um, I gotta get back into it. It's yeah. been a rough first trimester, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of yeah. disappeared for a little bit. <laughs> I totally understand. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, in two weeks, we're gonna have Lisa Belladonna. She'll be joining us on September third. Yay! Love Lisa. Yeah. Um, so that should be so really talented. interesting. Um, and uh, we're gonna be doing these probably every other week or so. Um, but except for the week of uh the ARP 2500 celebration the last week of September. And that's going to be international. We're going to be speaking to some people in the Netherlands, um, hopefully in Cologne, in Spain. It's going to be really, really cool. Can't wait Uh, to see you. Thank you all, and um, take care. Till next time, keep on synthing, stay healthy, stay safe. Bye Bye for now.